in about five seconds. Have a great meeting, everyone. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to General Council for February 13th. So before we get started, let's take a moment of silence to honor the community members we have recently lost. Let's take a moment of silence. Thank you. So let's get started. Um, identification of media. I don't see anyone. So I, I have some community acknowledgements today that we'll want to start off with. Um, we had the awards banquet on Saturday, and I just wanted to share uh, the recipients um, from all the awards. Also, before we started um, during the um, the lunch or the brunch that we had, we shared a video featuring an interview with Caleb Thomas, a remarkable individual from our community who is now pursuing his dreams at Missouri State University. Following that, we had the Six Nations Wilma General Award. Uh, the winning recipients were Lana Henhock and Dorothy Russell Patterson. We had the Ruby Sear Scholarship Award the winners were um, Cheryl Porter, Angela Bomberry, and Cassandra Bomberry. Then we had the high school high average awards. So the third highest average awards for the grade nine girl was Raylene Davis, 90.6% from McKinnon Park. We had a tie be between two um, grade nine boys. Um, Torin Longboat, 90.6 from SNP Steam Academy. Um, the other grade nine boy was Drayden Jamison Whitlow, 83.8% from Six Nation from SNP Steam Academy. The grade 10 girl was Leiloni Bomberry, 93.6 from Assumption College School. The grade 10 boy was Leland Thomas, 85.5 from Hagersville High School. The grade 11 girl, Kayla Kennedy, 93.5% from Assumption College School. Grade 11 boy, Wayne Bomberry, 92% from McKinnon Park Secondary School. The grade 12 girl, Evie Longboat, 90.5 from McKinnon Park Secondary School. The grade 12 boy, Kay Cassius, Cassius Hill Martin, 85.6 from Tollgate Technical Skill Center. The second highest average award winners, the grade nine girl, Peyton Squire Johnson, 91% from Assumption College School. Grade nine boy, Nolan Lickers, 85.1% from McKinnon Park Secondary School. Grade 10 girl, uh, Canis Jamison, 94% from Assumption College School. Grade 10 boy, Caleb Styers, 88.1 from Brantford Collegiate Institute, BCI. Grade 11 girl, Madeline White, 93.8 from Holy Trinity Catholic School. Uh, grade 11 boy, Carter Sky Blum from 92% from McKinnon Park Secondary School. Grade 12 girl, Maya Thompson, 91.6 from Holy Trinity Catholic School. And the grade 12 boy, Zach Jamison, 86.6 from Pauline Johnson Collegiate. Now the highest average award winners, the grade nine girl, uh, Jocelyn General, 96% from BCI, and there was a tie. So Marley Reensbury, 96% from Assumption College School. Uh, the grade nine boy was Bra Brandon Axton, 85.8% from Brantford Collegiate Institute. Grade 10 girl, Madison Davey, 99% from Assumption College uh, School. <laughs> yeah. Grade 10 uh, boy, Owen Cloet, 89 0.1% from Brantford Collegiate 
Institute. Grade 11 girl, Katrina Davis, 98.3 from Brantford Collegiate Institute. Grade 11 boy, uh, Xander Wyeth, 96% from Assumption Collegiate School. And the grade 12 girl, Rylan Bomberry, 93.6 from Assumption College School. And the grade 12 boy from uh, Kaylin Martin, 87.5 from Holy Trinity Catholic School. The next award we went to was Making Strides Award. The winners were um, Christian McQueen, Damian Montour Villeneuve, uh, Shakira Thomas, um, uh, Dennis Longboat, and H Holly Henry. Then we went into uh, the Six Nations Grand River Ontario Works Recognition Awards. Uh, Michelle Sandy, Teresa Van Avery, Megan Jameson, Gilbert Jr. Hill, Shelby Smoke, Janine Jameson, Louise Shipman. And the last award that we had was the Six Nations Community Treasures Awards, was in Natasha Longboat and the former Six Nations Chiefs of Police, Glenn Lickers. And we had a recognition, um, Six Nations of the Grand River recognized Daniel uh, Ma Maas. Um, we ex expresses our sincere gratitude for his generous support to our community. So those were all the um, recipients of the awards. It was a great day. And thank you for everyone um, who came out, but also um, congratulations. Those are amazing marks. Yay. <laughs> Okay, so let's go to the agenda, adoption of the agenda. Is there any additions or deletions to the agenda? If not, can I have a mover? Move by Amos, second by Dale. All in favor? Anybody opposed? Carried. So we have one delegation um, that's here, um, Barry Hill. Update on Royal Coat of Arms event. So when you speak, Barry, if you can just push the button, a uh, red light will come on for you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank, thank you for letting me uh, come tonight. Um, I'm here as a, uh, a warden of the Mohawk Chapel, and I, um, I want to uh, update you on a um, very significant um, event that has occurred. And um, uh, I think it's um, important that uh, we recognize the fact that this is unique to this community. Um, of all the First Nations in Canada, uh, Six Nations of the Grand is the only one uh, with this uh, honor. And uh, it has a, a lot of impact on our um, relationships uh, going forward. And I want to talk about that later as to uh, getting uh, council and other representatives involved in the, in the process. But I'm going to go through uh, what we have uh, there's a slide on the board now, and I'll describe what that is in a minute. And a bit of a historical background as to how we got this far, um, what our current plans are to uh, uh, recognize this and have a, an event that honors that and, um, and involves the wider community, including uh, representatives of, of uh, the royal government, or the royal family, the lieutenant governors, and so forth. Uh, I'll talk about a committee that uh, I'm setting up uh, and maybe council that would want to be involved along with tourism. And then we'll have some questions at that point if you wish, and then we'll talk about the next steps and how to organize um, and what will happen. Uh, and um, probably a preliminary motion of a budget because uh, the chapel has paid for some of this so far, but it's depending on the size of the event, uh, it'll be beyond our, our, our ability. So <clears throat> what you've got up on the board, and I handed out um, three pieces of paper. Uh, you've know, got a, um, a very large uh, to, all, to all whom type of document, the letters patent 
<clears throat> these are royal, this is a royal coat of arms for uh, the Royal Chapel of the Mohawk. Um, it has the king's crown on it. It has the cross swords of St. Paul, the Apostle Paul, who, uh, the swords represent uh, his ministry uh, in, in, through history. And it has the two row, it has, <laughs> it has the uh, uh, tree of peace on it. Um, it. So it ties together uh, the elements of, of the, the crown, uh, the church and, and our community. Uh, the coats of arms usually have a motto. Um, a lot of times you'll see them, it's in Latin or French. Um, there wasn't enough space to do this in Mohawk. <laughs> there were various drafts that we tried, including having a representation of the two row and so forth, but this seemed to be most appropriate. Uh, the words come from um, uh, God, the apostle, the epistle of Paul to the Corinthians, which is uh, part of the Bible, uh, faith, hope, and charity. And those words are used in the St. James Version of the um, Bible, uh, King James Version, rather, of the Bible, which would be the same edition as the uh, Bible that we have for the chapel that came to us in, in 1712. And so um, it ties together our history. Uh, and most importantly, um, it's an acknowledgement on behalf of the crown uh, of our relationship uh, through the silver covenant chain and our, our longstanding uh, um, relationship as allies uh, and not subjects, which is something I like to say a lot when I'm doing tours. And I'll be doing it tomorrow night in Mount Pleasant. I'm speaking to a bunch of seniors in Mount Pleasant, and uh, they probably won't like what I'm going to say. But anyway, um, so um, this has a long history to it. Um, I think Helen made the motion before COVID to get going on this. Uh, yep, and um, I took over as chair of the chapel committee in 2013, and I was going through the files, and I found this letter. Uh, it was from St. James Palace and with a postmark of Buckingham Palace. And it was a grant from the, um, the Queen's office for uh, a coat of arms, a royal coat of arms and other accoutrements that go with that. And nothing had been done with it since 2005. <laughs> and so we got started on it um, before COVID and it's taken six years uh, to get to this point with the um, artists getting sick and the delays going back and forth to the governor general's office, uh, getting approvals, then had to go to England to be approved by the queen before she, thankfully before she passed. And now we have it as of three weeks ago. So I'm getting it framed to hang in a chapel. Um, and uh, I want to set up a special ceremony where we have uh, dignitaries uh, representing the crown to come and actually present this uh, with some event. Okay, and, and this 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 uh, can be as big as we want it to be. At this point, uh, I got um, a uh, confirmation from the lieutenant governor. Uh, I've got an acknowledgement from the governor general's office that they're working on it. Uh, setting up a schedule, and I've talked to the uh, King's uh, secretary in Canada uh, about having someone from the royal family. Now, as you probably saw in the news today, the, the King is not coming to Canada this year um, because of his health issues. He was uh, intended to come in May, um, and so that's now off. Um, we might have a better chance of someone other than that and other than Prince William. The problem is when you have the King or the, uh, the um, Prince William, um, <clears throat> the Prince of Wales, the government controls it and they pay it. And so we'd have to get through Trudeau to get on the agenda. 
uh, if we have someone other than that, like Princess Anne or uh, the uh, Duchess or Duke of Edinburgh, um, they often come to Canada several times a year with their regiments and so on. And so we could work something in with that. So that's my plan. Right now, we've got a date of September 29th as the date for that in the afternoon. That's a Sunday afternoon. Um, and I said the Lieutenant Governor has already committed. Um, the date, the reason for that date uh, triggered from um, discussions I had with the, the King's personal chaplain, uh, a, um, a Canon Paul Wright, who was here last spring. Uh, he met with uh, Mark. Um, I took him he came to the chapel, we came here, uh, we went to the old council house, uh, we toured, we had, took him to lunch with great. <laughs> he stood in line to eat at the cafeteria. Um, and we had uh, a, a meeting and dinner at uh, uh, Star Springs Longhouse. And there was a good discussion. We had 20 people, uh, ancient chiefs and clan mothers and never chief keepers. So it was a good day. So he's coming again on, on, on the September 28th weekend. Uh, and that coincides with a um, the reason for the Saturday event, and it may be longer than that, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. There's a delegation of Maoris uh, who are coming to Toronto to talk about having a royal chapel for themselves. And um, people from Australia as well. Our chaplain, uh, uh, Rosalind Allen went to New, uh, New Zealand last fall, so now they're coming here and having this meeting and discussion about getting a chapel for themselves. And so it follows logically that Sunday they would come here. So we'd have this whole group come as well and, and make this uh, quite an event. Um, so that's why that date has been picked so far. And it's far enough out that hopefully there's enough time for these other folks to add this to their calendar. That's my, my hope. Um, uh, I'll just read what I, I wrote. Uh, uh, my dear Governor General, on September 29, 2024, the Stewardship Committee of Her Majesty's Royal Chapel of the Mohawk is planning an event to commemorate the granting by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II of royal arms in recognition of the long-standing allegiance between the Crown and the Haudenosaunee, also known as Six Nations of the Grand River Territory. It would be a great honor to us if you would celebrate with us as the representative of the Crown in Canada to make the formal presentation. A historical background is attached, an order of service is being developed and will be forwarded as details are confirmed. At this point, it is planned for the ceremony to be held at 2 p.m. on September 29, 2024, lasting for about an hour and a half with fellowship afterward, if we can afford it. We look forward with anticipation that you'll be able to join with us and other representatives of federal, provincial, and local authorities, along with our elected and traditional leaders of Six Nations and the community at large at the historically significant event. And peace and friendship, yours truly. So that's what we're doing, okay? Um, and um, as I said, I, I talk, I'm talking to you tonight. Uh, I reached out to Jock the other day. Um, haven't heard back yet, but Rick Mentor was going to speak to him on the weekend. So hope we'll I'll hear so soon. As I said, he um, we had an excellent visit with uh, with uh, Jock and, and and everyone at uh, last spring, and so I'm, we have to design a service that is. Um, uh, encompassing of all of everyone um, and um, the sensitivities around you know various points of view and that is too but this 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 belongs to all of us right this this is uh, this is a recognition of, of our uh, our relationship going back to uh, uh, 1600s uh, in the correspondence, just to reinform it, uh, in, in reinforce what I was saying, um, in addition to the title, His Majesty's Chapel of the Mohawk, which was conferred by Edward the Seventh in 1904, and that's how come we got the name we got. 
is now going to read Her Majesty's Royal Ch Chapel Royal on the Mohawk. Well, now it'll be His Majesty's. So the switch, the switching of the word royal and chapel is very significant because the 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 chapels in England are used by the by the crown or chapels royal. In old days, that actually that was an entire entourage of people, musicians and ministers and and choristers, and they travel with the crown as he moved around. Like you can imagine Henry the Eighth, so all these people following him singing. <laughs> this is what they used to do. Um, <clears throat> there's a, a special, there's a mark of the special relationship between uh, Her Majesty's Chapel, Royal of the Mohawk, and the Sovereign. Uh, the designation confers in perpetuity the privilege reserved as a gift of the Sovereign to admit the clergy and choir and the vestry of St. Pa uh, Paul's to wear appropriate royal scarlet robes. Now, I bought one for our chapel already. It's a special color of red, come from some dye made in India. <laughs> Is very expensive, but that's uh, also puts us in the in the same uh, category as as a royal um, um, chapel uh, uh, members. Um, and this is where it says the <clears throat> sorry the designation of Her Majesty Chapel Royal the Mog would lead to the creation of an appropriate official heraldic emblem embodying appropriate elements of the Mohawk provincial diocesan, which is the church and royal arms, and that's what we've got. So that's where we stand today. Any um, clarifying questions or anything? Okay. Thank you, uh, Barry. Is there any um, questions or comments? So like I say, what I've handed out is just a little more background as to what I've been saying. Uh, this actual thing here is a three feet by four feet. <laughs> And I'm getting it framed with special museum glass. Um, it's going to weigh a ton. <laughs> um, and uh, the other thing I'm getting it framed is this explanation. It's smaller. It's like 18 by 24. So they'll hang in the chapel. Or you can make it. And um, uh, that's, we've paid for that out of the chapel money so far. We've been able to ha save money because... Uh, tourism under council now has been paying up a lot of the expenses for, for heat and hydro and cutting the grass, which was killing us. Uh, so now we've had enough money because of that support to to pay to get this far. Uh, the heraldry and the artistry and all that has cost $3,500 um, to get it approved through. It goes through the governor general's office. That's where the chief herald for Canada is. So, uh, so um, I have Dale, Helen, and Amos. No, I just want to <clears throat> excuse me, just say congratulations, Barry. I know you do a lot of work there, and you've been there for eons. <laughs> just uh, congratulations, Helen. Yeah, I used to sit on a Mohawk Chapel committee uh, for quite a while, actually, and. I've learned a lot about the Mohawk Chapel that I didn't know when I was sitting there. And they, they always have all kinds of special events. So there's people that go there. Like when they have special events, the, the building, uh, the church is full. Lots of people go there from here and from elsewhere. So the events are really big. Like they're important to people. So. Uh, I remember we talked about this, like you said, way back before COVID. So I'm glad to see that it's coming to actually get take place now. Um, and I don't know if you're going to be needing any kind of financial assistance because you haven't said anything. Well, I'm going to get there. Oh, uh, so I'll let you get to the financial assistance. Okay. Just to finish what uh, Helen said there. Um... I'm not sure if it's, I had a chance to get to the chapel, but uh, what surprises a lot of people, and I point this out, I've done probably in the last three years, I've talked to about 3,000 people, um, both at the chapel and then going out like I do I'm doing tomorrow night. Um, what surprises most people is the windows, they're, they're not 
Christian windows like you see in a church, you know, with all those, they, they're storytelling windows. And they talk about our story. And and that's that's what I try to do is to um, put that across as best I can in terms of our, from the, <clears throat> from the peacemaker all the way through to, to present time. I hand out free copies of the land claim. <laughs> Uh, and as I as best I can, so um, that's that's important, and I think having this event is important to further that. Now, and I mentioned about a committee. I'm, I'm putting it together a committee uh, like Rick Tour and so on uh, to help me chapel members, um, tourism staff, and um, because of the uh, potential. Um, Oh, it, we can go as far as we want, but there's there are political overtones to this too, right? Uh, I went to see, uh, I've done better on my own, but I, I went to see the MP and the MPP, you know, um, uh, <clears throat> and um, it's for, the, for Brandt, and they were, they were made me all kinds of promises, but nothing really happened, except that uh, Will Bluma wants me to invite the uh, ambassador from Holland, because... The original two row was done with the Dutch, right? Anyway, that's I'll leave that decision to you. <laughs> uh, that, and that's what I'm that's what I'm, I'm wondering about is is like some of these invitations, and we we will have to decide whether we how much we do publicly, how much we do by invitation, and and will the chapel hold everybody? All that has to be talked through. Um, we we would use some of this. Uh, example I've handed out of a card to make an invitation and so forth. Um, so I, I'd like a representative. I know you've got two political liaison officers and anyone here that wants to be on the chapel committee is always welcome. Um, to, they can fit it in uh, to make sure we, we keep in line with everyone's expectations as to where this is going to go. Or we can come back and tell you where we're going. Um, so uh, whether one 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 thought, depending how big this gets, like the chapel will hold about sixty five or more people comfortably. Um, if we get a really big crowd, like when the Queen came, well, I'd I'd like to do it inside because it's more meaningful. When the Queen came, everything was done outside, and and then the Queen went inside by, she and Philip and and. Chief and his wife and Tommy Hill were in there, and she signed the Bible, and then, but nobody saw it. Um, if we do it again, I'd like to do it inside and maybe live stream it outside if there's such a big crowd, right? We could probably do that if we could afford it. And so that's kind of what we need to talk, talk about. Um, like so far, we spent $3,500 of, of, uh, from the chapel um, uh, um, account. And another eleven hundred is going to come with uh, for the framing, but after that, depending on what we're going to do, um, I'd like to get some support. Um, as I think it's it's a community event, and we should have as many people from the community as well as there, as well as just invited guests. Um, it ha it has to be for everyone. I truly believe that. Um, there might be a cost for security. I was thinking of getting the Bible and perhaps we should do the silver because it's a unique time for that. Um, I'm always terrified of getting the silver out <laughs> because it's um, it's just too, it's um, portable. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, and anyway, so we can get I was thinking of the uh, color guard. I was thinking of Six Nations police and, and so on, all being on pant. And so, I don't know. At this point, I'm suggesting perhaps we we uh, we make a motion to, uh, based on ongoing development and future approval, we think about probably around ten thousand dollars to to handle this thing at at, at maybe a top. So I was just talking with Nathan that um, if you can discuss with him and then at next finance, then we can, um, before you'll get a, like your right budget yeah. instead of just around, just so we can yeah. um, have yeah. the right numbers. 
Okay. okay. Like I say, I, yeah. want, I want to have a, a committee meeting first. Um, right now, it's uh, it's just my opinion. Mostly, I want to get more input from different people. So we, we, we're we kind of in the right direction for everybody, and then we can develop something meaningful. So, yes. Okay. So, yeah. So, once wonderful. you get that, yeah, once you get that done, mm -hmm. just um, meet with Nathan, and then we can bring it to finance. Great. I have Amos. Go ahead. I oh, just want to thank you. Congratulate you, Bear. You've been doing so much work for the chapel. I see you out there once in a while walking around and walking around the ground. Um, I just like to congratulate you. I, I know you did a lot of work and it shows you my age. I was at the event. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. congratulations. You've done a lot of work and I, I hope you continue to do it. Um, I was ready to make a motion, but uh, I guess we'll wait till finance. I was going to move to find some money to help them support this event. And for sure, and once you, you talk to who you need to talk to your committee to find the numbers that you need, yeah. then we'll be able to. Okay, Helen, did you have anything else? So who's on the committee nowadays? Well, um, we've got chapel committee like Don Don Leach and 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 Charity Hill, and uh, um, of course our chaplain should be on it, um, Ross on Elm. Um, Former Chief Ava helped me get, get inside the Lieutenant Governor's office to find a woman who could call oh, Ottawa yeah. and pave the way. So I'm putting her on the committee. Yeah, that's <laughs> that, was, that was a very helpful thing. Um, otherwise, I'd be just filling out blank forms and emailing them and hoping somebody will read them, right? But I got to talk to real people, including that guy that represents the king. So that yeah, nice guy, actually. <laughs> Whether he'll do anything, we'll find out, right? And so... Um, you want to be on the committee? You're welcome. Mm -hmm. I might come back. You can come back. Yeah. No, we, we actually missed. You see, what, what happened when uh, we always had two counselors on the on the chapel committee. And and actually, that's something <clears throat> I've got on my to-do list someday is to um, rework the chapel committee um, organization. And then there's two things that have to be done. Uh, we've got some new, I'd like to have a, an executive committee. I'm getting ahead of myself. But I'd like to have an executive committee and an advisory committee. And so we meet the advisory committee uh, of people who understand the history and significance of, of the community, meet two or three times a year and tell the rest of us what the priority should be, and then we just do it, right? So that's one thing. Uh, and then we need to fine-tune our relationship between uh, the operating of the chapel and tourism department. Because tourism is still responsible for the summer tours. Uh, they hire the students to do the tours in the summer. Uh, they book the weddings. We've already got six requests for the year. And they, weddings are money makers. <laughs> um, other tours, bus tours, all that stuff, that's what tourism does. Okay. So, so we look after the uh, events and the and the, any service. Did you see our uh, write up about Elvis? We made money on that one. We there's a minister. <laughs> yeah, he's based he's in London right now, but he he comes from Bruce County. Young fellow, well, he's not that young, even, but he is excellent. He he does a um, he sings. He doesn't just mime it. He he does Elvis got the costume and everything and he's actually a minister so he has a message built into his thing but he he's fantastic the church was packed and uh i should get you i'll send you some pictures um and uh yeah so we're, we're trying to do other things to increase um interest and uh one of the things we don't get and and somebody should try and do something about that i guess i don't know who uh, we don't get the school school tours, um, and it's it's our history too. Right? It's everyone should know the foundations of why we're here and why we're on the Grand River and all that, and that's all built into those storytelling windows. Okay, anything else? Um, any other comments? If not, again, thank you for coming in and mm -hmm. uh, work with Nathan mm -hmm. with the numbers, mm -hmm. and again, congratulations and. Um, we'll go from there. Thank you very much. Everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Can I have a mover to um, accept his information? Moved by Dale, seconder, Amos. All in favor? Be opposed? Seen uncarried. Yes. 
<laughs> so let's go to number six, um, the council minutes. If there's no questions or comments, can I have a mover to accept the minutes for January 23rd? Moved by Carrie, seconder. Second. Second Cynthia. by Cynthia. All in favor? And by opposed, seen and carried. Is there any counselor reports? Oh, go ahead, Helen. Yeah, I met with the, the um, Chiefs Committee on Housing and Infrastructure met uh, last week. I think it was last week. To discuss different issues and um, I'm doing some reports because that's when we found out that CMHC was transferring all their programs and services to Six Nations, which uh, everybody, we were kind of blindsided, I guess you could say, but I, I found out that um, we were, the committee was blindsided, but I found out that we knew that they were doing that. Six Nations Housing knew they were going to do that. So I'm doing a report on that. Uh, I want to get uh, people from the C C CMHC. It's a Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, in case anybody knows what it is. And they do, they do a lot of pro different programs for housing. They do that, they have that RAP program. So they're transferring all the RAP programs <laughs> There's like six of them under wrap to First Nations, not just Six Nations. They're transferring to all First Nations along with 100% of the money. Um, uh, to me, uh, I don't know. To me, it seems to me like they're sneaking in the back door because they're not saying what's going on. So that ha I have a concern with that. Um, so I'm going to give out a report, and I was talking to Nathan today, and I'm going to try and get somebody down here to do an information to us as to really what's going on. The other one is the added to reserve. Um, they were supposed to be, the first phase of added to the reserve was to figure out how they were going to engage with First Nations. And then the second phase of added to reserve was to do engagement with First Nations. And then the third phase was to submit to submit, make a submission to cabinet, the legislation. And that was supposed to take place in 2025. Well, they're speeding it up now. And they're combining the engagement and the submission phases. So there's something going on there. Um, because they're speeding it up now, so I know there's something going on. So I'm going to get them down here to talk to us about what they're doing, because I was talking to Lonnie about it today as well, and uh, to find out what they're up to. And I really, I really, when I give my report, I'm really supporting that Six Nations Council. We develop our own land registry system. That's what I would like to see. Other First Nations are working on developing their own, and I know one of the PTOs is developing one. Um, so I think Six Nations, we need to start looking at developing our own land registry system and trying to get out of that added to reserve process. Because like I mentioned before, when we buy land and add it to reserve, we're giving it back to the federal government. You know, why would we go buy land and then give it back to the federal government? It doesn't even make sense. We can't even own it. We buy it and then we can't own it. Like, what the heck? We got to do something. So to me, this is a good opportunity to try and do something because they are making changes. So that's why I want to get somebody to come down and talk to us, just to give us information even to say what they're doing and what are they looking at. And then... I mean, Lonnie got talking. We have to start working on looking on that, trying to work on that land registry system, our own, and let them know this is what we want to do. So we talked about that. Uh, and I got information on that. I'm going to be distributing to council. I got quite a bit of information to give to council. I'm going to get Shelby to photocopy it all because it's a lot of reading if you just do it on your your phone or your iPad. 
So I'm gonna get Shelby to photocopy them all and put it in everybody's mailbox. Both of the two, the CMHC and the ATR. Um, then we can go from there. The, my, my Chiefs Committee on Housing, our next meeting, we're going to be having CMHC there to talk about what they're doing. Because everybody was kind of surprised, like they didn't really know. Uh, but when I was talking to Nathan earlier, we kind of wondered if it was tied up into the AFN somehow, doing something. Maybe the AFN said, go ahead and do it, I don't know. Anyway, it's a political thing. It's political right now. So we, we talked other things, but those are the most important that we talked about. Okay. Um, thank you, Helen. And I'm glad that you're going to bring them down to explain what's what's happening. Can I have a mover to accept Helen's um, report as um, information? Moved by Leslie, second by Amos. All in favor? We opposed? Seen uncarried. So I don't see any other ones. Oh, go ahead. I have a question. Would it be advantageous if you took a letter to the uh, CMHC people and give it to from the chief saying you're invited to come? to Six Nations or to present? I'm hoping we can do something. I just, we need to find out what's going on first and how come we didn't know? Like, I don't know whether, I don't know how long this has been in the works. I don't know how long it's been in the works. Um. There is a representative from Ontario at the event, and it's Chief Welford King. I, I, I don't know how, if he knows it. <laughs> I'm not really familiar with Chief King, so I don't know if he would know me even if I phoned there, but maybe Nathan can touch base somehow to find out what's going on at that level. So. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Nathan said he'll do follow-up. Okay, let's go to number eight, um, an update from the chief's office. I just have one that I just want to um, announce to the community. Illegal dumping at the Oneida Business Park. It was brought to my attention on Friday evening, uh, February 9th, that a large amount of construction waste and an animal carcass were dumped on the territory at the Oneida Business Park. We do not know how long this dumping has occurred. However, we are confident that the waste is coming from off reserve as there are currently no large construction projects taking place within the community that would produce this amount of waste. My office continues to be in contact with the Minister of Environment office. So I got asking if you, if the community, if you have any information on this illegal dumping that occurred at the Oneida Business Park, please um, contact my office. So again, we're in um, talks with the Minister of Environment Office to see the next steps to what's happening. I just wanted to let the community know. And there's no scheduling, so I need a motion to adjourn uh, to go into in-camera. Oh, go ahead, Helen. In terms of that dumping at the United Business Park, maybe it'd be a good idea to start putting gates on those, land those roadways. And that's what... Um, we we're talking today, um, Nathan and uh, Mike, about what do we need to, to do for there, for sure. So again, um, a motion to adjourn to go to in camera. Moved by Helen, second by Leslie. All in favor? Anybody opposed? Seen and carried. Yeah. Hazel, <laughs> uh, thank you for joining us tonight, everyone. Have a great night.